all right i'll do like an updated version of this since i did since, since i did one like two years ago but i don't think anyone watched that cartoon network tier list i grew up exclusively on cartoon network i didn't like nickelodeon or disney channel nickelodeon seemed too weird in their own like not good way and disney channel was too like bland and kid friendly so Cartoon Network was my domain, so I think I got good uh, jump on this. Uh, two stupid dogs. I've never heard of this one. This must have been like a an older one. Yeah, two stupid dogs. Never heard of this. Um, sixteen. This one I hated. Like I thought for a second it was kind of good, but. Uh, mediocre. There may have been like a couple good moments, but yeah, like they did not do teenagers good here. A pub named Scooby Doo. Scooby Doo, not ripoffs, but like um, breakaways or like you know, like Scooby Doo properties like on their own tangents are kind of all right. The original just never seems to be beaten. In terms of like, it's still being um, like obviously a cartoon, but there's it's still kind of scary. Like when I watch some of the old Scooby Doo stuff I have on DVD, it's still kind of frightening sometimes. The pub version, it's more you know, it's it's more cartoony. It was at least good from what I remember. Adventure Time, this was really good, great one. I never finished it. I know a little bit of the lore, like how it kind of ends, but yeah, this is a great show. Like it was, it was so open to doing whatever, but it never seemed too wacky out of place. Even though the land of Ooh is a crazy place, it still seemed to fit. And it, it was, you know, Jake, great character, side uh, best friend to Finn. Finn's growth throughout the series as he deals with the princesses. It was great. Almost Naked Animals. I kind of remember this one, but it was just like this is one of those shows that probably would have been, would have been better on Adult Swim, where like you know they take a concept and then they just run to whatever they want with it. So I can definitely see this more as an Adult Swim kind of thing, just like a bunch of adults who hate or are cynical about modern shows and just take any wacky idea and run with it. <laughs> but I don't remember too much of this one. It was probably all right. Yeah, Powder has some zingers sometimes. He's, he's kind of good. The Amazing World of Gumball. I first hated this one. The, the whole clash of different um, aesthetics was kind of weird to me. It just seemed like, uh, you know... Another family comedy cartoon stuff. But later on, the series actually like caught on to something. Some type of like... I don't know how to explain the humor, but it, it almost like... It figured itself out. Kind of liked it. So this one, it graduated from... I think mediocre to at least... At least kind of good. Kind of good. Apple and Onion? I have never heard of this. Atomic Betty? I want to say I've heard of it before, but no, it's just I've never, never seen Atomic Betty. Baby Looney Tunes? I think there's a conspiracy there, or like there's a story about there was an episode of Baby Looney Tunes in which they got drunk. <laughs> They got drunk and actually had alcohol. They showed baby the babies drinking alcohol. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't remember that one. But yeah, I don't. I don't remember the series too much. I don't want to imagine Looney Tunes characters as babies. That's just a weird modifier. But this is definitely Cartoon Eric's way of making more, you know, objectively kid shows. Batman Beyond. This was fucking fantastic. 
Batman Beyond Good, a great take on late stage Batman and how his legacy would continue. Terry McGinnis, the Joker revival, all oh, that was amazing. Also, I think maybe my, my early like infatuation with cartoon women came from Batman Beyond. Because the women in this show looked they they drew him too beautiful for some reason. I don't know why. But I was heavily infatuated with the women on this show. I did see, dude, I, I saw that. I literally clicked on a streamer just randomly before I went stream. And they were watching a trailer for like Kong versus Godzilla or something. Although luckily it was a just shining streamer, so they paused the trailer to speak for like twenty minutes about bullshit. So I, I didn't the, the the trailer wasn't spoiled for me, but I do like I definitely like Godzilla. I kind of like King Kong. Batman. Uh... Oh, the I, I think this is this is Batman: The Brave and the Bold. This was a great one. I did like this one. I remember it, it, it was especially great because there's this one scene in which he's fighting like this cross-dressing villain or cross-dressing villains. And he, uh, Ro Batman's is in this giant mech suit along with the, one of the villains. Batman, of course, has the upper hand. And one of the cross dressers says, like, you wouldn't, hit a, you wouldn't hit a lady. And then Batman says, the hammer of justice is unisex. <laughs> and then he beats up on the, the dude or woman, whatever. I think Kong could get him because he can move faster and swing around Godzilla. Yeah, probably. Although, the thing is that Kong is also all natural. He doesn't have the crazy superpowers that Godzilla has, like the laser breath and all that stuff. Dude, also, also Shin Godzilla? Kong against Shin Godzilla? No. No, you cannot entertain even a hypothetical in which, Godzilla, uh, in which Kong beats Shin Godzilla. He's not. Okay. I, I, I'm not hearing any arguments. The original Ben 10 series, the best. The great, it was so good. Made by Man of Action. One of the greatest people to work in, in uh, Cartoon Network. Uh, his name is Man of Action. Great show. It should, I don't know how, but like, it, it's, it's kind of like uh, Codename Kids Next Door. The, the, they take the point of kids, teenagers, young people, put them in like cool, awesome scenarios, Literally just a random teenager having a watch that turns him to aliens. That's a cool fucking concept. This was around the time Cartoon Eric had good concepts, good fun concepts, drawn beautifully, great stories. They just knew how to do it. This was part of their golden age. Ben 10 was amazing. These Ben 10 sequels, I have no idea. This one looks, I did not watch this one because it just looks shit. Um, I think Alien Force was the sequel to the original series. Ultimate Alien was after, and then this one, I have no idea. Ah, these sequels, they were kind of good in terms of just continuing the story. Alien Force was at least great, and I don't remember Ultimate Alien. Batman, I have not seen this, new, this newest animated Batman. And watched it. Dude, I'm getting there, pattern. Calm your fucking memories, dude. Camp Lazo, fucking amazing Camp Lazo. Damn it. That theme song was so stuck in my head. Amazing Camp Lazo. It was mostly just focus on the dynamic between all the dudes. The was the Bean Scouts. I don't remember how Teen Titans ended because I never, I don't, I don't think I've ever seen the ending. Oh, Camp Lazo. I've not seen that one ending, ending too. Because whenever I saw these shows premiering on Cartoon Network, it was just whatever episode. I never knew if it was, I never kept track of like, oh, new episode, you know, every Friday I, at, you know, 5 p.m. Central or whatever. So it, I don't know if it was a new episode or a rerun. I just watched whatever, ser whatever episode. Yeah, just the, just the dynamic between the Bean Scouts, I think they're, or like their, their cabin name was the Jelly Beans. 
between Raj, Clam, Laszlo, just great dynamic. And then they would interact with the, the woman camp on the other side of the river. It was just a great show, man. You just, you just had to watch it. Captain Planet, this is an older one. Like, more, like, this is a show for, like, patterns age group. Never seen it, though. But the premise is that these kids have these rings, and they put them together, creates Captain Planet, who teaches you about the importance of saving the environment and caring for it. Chop stocky chooks? The f fuck is this? I want to say I, like, I've seen this before, but no. Chop socky chops. I, I've never heard of this one. Chowder. Fucking amazing chowder. Oops, sorry. Ch dude, chowder. My god, again, amazing. When the Taking from the kid's perspective of, a, of exploring this big, amazing world of cooking. Even for as dumb as he seems, it's just amazing. The, the, whole, thing, the whole thing being food-themed? Hold on. The whole thing being food-themed was amazing. All the characters were named after food. The city was food. All the like cooking lessons, and then sometimes they they would break the fourth wall in great ways too. I even remember this one episode, and I, I dedicate it to memory too. It was when all of them were playing that sports game, like in a giant stadium. And it, it was like just this giant arena full of nonsense games, and the full name of the of the tournament or like the game was some long winded just nonsense. And I actually dedicate to memory that entire thing. It was um, field tournament style, up and down, on the ground, manja, flanja, blanja, banja, ishka, bibbo, babble, flabble, domo, roma, flomo, boma, jingle, jango, every angle, brick a brack, a flack a stack, a two ton rerun, free for all, big ball. One of the best episodes on this on the series. <clears throat> Clarence. Never watched Clarence. This is part of the New Age Cartoon Network, and I'm doubtful that it's it's, it's any good. I'm doubted. I'm doubtful. Class of 2000. I vaguely remember this one. I'm pretty sure this guy was voiced by um, what's his name? Andre 3000, the the dude from Outcast. <sighs> I remember like bits and pieces, but I remember being at least somewhat good. Cloudy with a chance of meatballs? They put that on Cartoon Network? I've never watched that. I didn't even know it was on there. I'm just saying I remember it being good. This is my tearless pattern, not you. Oh, Koli Yoko. God damn, I remember this one too. Freaking, f first of all, I don't know why they made all the characters have giant foreheads. I don't know why they did that. But, man, again, another great premise. Kids going into a digital realm to, like, save it from, like, a, like some virus or, like, some, some person taking over it. It was an amazing concept. I loved it. Also, one of the first ones I saw that had 3D graphics. Although it looked kind of like unca uncanny. Great. Also, another theme song that would, that would get stuck in my head. I don't know why their forms were so big. It was just weird. Codename Kids Next Door. The best. Again, great concept during the Cartoon Era Golden Age. A bunch of kids literally fight off growing up by fighting adult tyranny. They have... Giant tree houses of 2 by 4 technology weapons. They have moon bases, ships, and shit. Like, it was literally just a good idea. It was amazing. Executed great. Yeah, the other 2 by 4 technology. There was that one that was like... Uh, it was like a gun of two, of two boards. Whenever you pulled the trigger, it would like slap it. And then you would like slap their like butt or something. That was fun. And then there was like a... I remember number 4 had a gun that was shaped like a mustard... Like a, a thing of mustard. That was just that was just funny. 
Yeah, and, and if it fits well too with the natural idea about kids growing up, and then when the kids got too old, I think they reach like, when they become a teenager, they get uh, decommissioned. All their memories of being in the KND get erased, and they go into teenagerhood. And they, they would also fight off teenagers. The kids would fight off being t fight off teenagers and adult tyranny. It it fits both in the fantastical theme and the real theme about growing up. Like it worked on all levels. Just a great idea. Yeah, one of the best Cartoon Network shows ever made. Put that over here. Courage of Cowardly Dog also fantastic, fantastic. Uh, not just concept wise, but in terms of just surreal terror they they would put in like i remember i still remember that giant like floating head that was in the basement of their house and then there was king ramses also dude that song did any of you remember the song that was playing in the king ramses episode that was like um the man in gauze the man in gauze king ramses the man in gauze you remember that one it was like a it was like playing on a record in the show Wait, I should be able to find it, actually. It's a really good song. <laughs> you remember it? Okay, I, I just have to play because it's so good. Uh, it has to be on YouTube. Oh, yeah, this one, I think. Yeah, this one. Men and gods. The 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 men and gods. Such a good song. So good. The men and gods. The men and gods. Although, luckily, the show also had some, like, wholesome moments of, like, courage helping friends or people in relationships get back together. So it was, it was able to balance out the uh, horrifying parts with the wholesome parts. Yeah. A staple in the Cartoon Network legacy. Oh, Cow and Chicken. I... When this, when this show came on, I would turn off Cartoon Network because I thought it was just too weird. Like, this show seemed like in the same vein of, like, Ren and Stimpy. So it just, it's, it just seemed too weird. I really watched it. Craig. Freak. Oh, this is, a, yeah, this is more of a modern Cartoon Network one. I have not watched it. I've given up on modern-day Cartoon Network. I, mean, I haven't had a cable in 10 years. I haven't watched TV in around 10 years, so. This newest stuff... I don't, even ha I don't even have the immediate means to watch it, and I'm not interested. The Cramp Twins? This looks familiar for some reason, but I've never seen this one. Actually, I don't know what this one even is. What? The, the Superhero Girls. What? It, it, what you, even is that? Dexter's Laboratory, great, classic, original series, such a good one. This little, kid, this little kid trying to like just mad scientist, genius kid trying to make devices and stuff. Annoying sister comes in, wrecks everything. St like still fantastic, but still grounded at the same time. Great. How to Train Your Dragons? Why are they putting out these like strange movie to like show movie to cartoon shows? There's How to Train Your Dragons and then um What was it? Yeah, Clyde with a Chance of Meatballs. Why are these showing up why are these showing up on Cartoon Network of all places? Duck Dodgers, I have not seen this one. Although it seemed kinda nice. Ed Ed and Eddie. God damn! Damn. Another fantastic. It's just. 
Oh, dude, it just works. Ed and Eddie is like Tard Howard's video games. They just work, man. Kablam on Teen... No, I've never seen Teen Nick. I never... I didn't watch t Nickelodeon or Disney Channel. It was too... I didn't like it. Card Generic was too good at the time. I was... Just like I was only a Nintendo kid, I was only a Card Network kid. I remained loyal to a fault. But dude, it just... Ed and Eddie just worked. Three friends, the camaraderie, a goal in mind, the hijinks, dynamics with the rest of the cul-de-sac, the humor, and not only the humor, but the jokes that would get better with the age, that would make more sense as you, as you grew older and watch back to it. Age like fine wine, and then do the ending, the ending of the movie, of the show, ended with the movie, uh, the big picture show. So good. Tied up everything in a nice little bow. Um, Ed rekindled with his brother, realizing he's a big jerk. And it's the fresh, it, it just works, man. It is Todd Howard video games. Ed and Eddie. Top five cartoons ever. Ever. Yeah, again, the Jawbreakers. Oh, Evil Con Carney. I remember this. I remember this show like a, like a fever dream. Because I remember like little bits and pieces. And it, I think it's based off the characters from Billy and Mandy, the Grim Adventures of. Yeah, there's like that evil teacher with the scar and the talking brain and the bear. Actually, you know what, Chad? I think this is where I got the idea of my plans for immortality. You know, I keep saying that when I die, I want to put my brain in the body of a bear or my consciousness. I think this is where I got the idea from so I can live forever. Literally from evil con carne. Yeah, but this this show just like planted itself strange in my in my brain. I couldn't get rid of it. But I always knew the show existed. And it's, it's just like a Billy and Mandy ripoff, or not a ripoff, but side thing. Uh, I don't remember it, but I'll give it the benefit of the doubt and say it was at least good. It was at least good. Yeah, the bear, like, the bear is always just dumbfounded because its brain was no longer there. Foster's home for imaginary friends. Again, this game, this show, Foster's Home, it's Todd Howard. It just works, man. It's a beautiful, good concept. Kid, it, it takes something grounded, makes it great even in the fantastical sense. Kids have imaginary friends. The most active imaginations kids have. That's, that's just a part of being a kid. They have imaginary friends. Okay, if a lot of these kids have imaginary friends, put them in a foster home. This is a great idea. It was just so good. There was a Blue who was an asshole, along with Coco and then Eduardo, Wilt. And then uh, Frankie, Mrs. Foster, that giant bunny rabbit douchebag. It just... Oh, and then Cheese. Dude, Cheese. Cheese was so good also as a character because his name worked with Mac and Blue. Blue Cheese, Mac and Cheese. It hit me so later how that joke worked so well. It's just good, man. It's, it, it just works. Todd Howard. It just does. The Garfield Show. This one was kind of alright. Um, I was never excited to see it. So it was, it was like, if, if this was on and Nickelodeon Disney Channel didn't have anything good, I would watch The Garfield Show. It was, eh. Generator Rex, my god. Made by the same dude who made Ben 10, Man of Action. Made by the same guy. Great idea. He took a very similar concept to Ben 10 about, about young boys, teenagers with weird powers. So he went from Alien Watch to able to be able to generate machines with your body. Great idea. And then the field of like nanotechnology and the lore behind the nanites. I just rewatched his entire series two months ago. Mwah. 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 It's great. Great idea. Executed fantastically, man of action. Best person in Cartoon Network uh, employment history. It's S tier. Oh, yeah, George of the Jungle. I remember this super early on. Very, like, um, early in my life. 
If... I don't remember too much of it, so... I'll give it... I'll just say I don't remember too much. But I, I've seen the show. Green Lantern, never watched it. Grim Adventures of Billy Mandy, I was just talking about it. Also, great... Great. It's just great. It's the whole... Those kids, they win over Grimm because of a dumb bet with Limbo, I think. And they, they explore the underworld. And then there's Dracula, that Dracula character. My favorite character in that show. Especially that, that one episode where Dracula and Grimm went to a golf, like a, a mini golf thing. And he was asking for the senior discount and they were just bickering about the price. That was nice. Go this so far? Of course it is, motherfucker. It's my list. It's a professional list, meaning objectively true list. The fuck are you talking about? Um, Billy, Billy was an amazing character. Irwin, I remember Irwin too, that, the one black guy. The one black kid in the show. Always hitting on Mandy. He was great too. Uh, oh yeah, and then there was, uh, there was that character who was a Voldemort ripoff. The, 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 also a great thing. Billy and Mandy did a... Um, did a, did a Harry Potter knockoff. They had... Yeah, Lord Moldybutt, that's his name. Lord Moldybutt as a Lord Mo Voldemort knockoff. And then they had a Harry Potter kid as well. With the, like, the you know lightning thing. That was a great parody of, of Harry Potter. Yeah, this show is just fantastic. It's just great. Grim and Evil? I don't remember this one. It seems familiar, but I don't remember that at all. He man. I I think I remember saying that or hearing that they remastered He Man for Cartoon Network or something. Black Kid name was Irwin. Huh, it's almost as if I already said that like two minutes ago, Pattern, but thank you for telling me again something I already knew. Like Pattern, drink your prune juice and go to bed, Grandpa. It's it's late. Alright. It's past supper time. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if this remaster will be just like a new story, or they're t they're taking the original series and just making it look pretty. I don't. I don't know uh, what they're doing with this one, but the original original He Man one, the original He Man cartoon, amazing, a staple. This one, I don't know. I'm not sure what they're doing with it. I've not watched it. If they're just are they taking the original series and just making it look pretty? Is it just a remaster? Do any of you know? I just never seen it, so I would just put it there. Puffy Amy Yumi. What the fuck even is that? Supposedly a Korean company. How do you, how did you type supposedly, motherfucker? It's supposedly. I will, I will be a grammar Nazi about that. It's, it's supposedly with a D, motherfucker. A Korean company bought the rights to bankrupt Cartoon Network as of a few weeks ago. How are they going to bankrupt Cartoon Network? They're huge. Look, in, in that one instance, I will be a grammar Nazi. Because it's a common, uh, very common mistake of it. Supposedly, the D. Yeah, I don't, I don't think a Korean company is going to uh, bankrupt Cartoon Network. They're too big. Although, assuming Cartoon Network is losing money given their new string of crap shows, they probably are. But, um, yeah, I'm not sure about the Sea Man one, original series, though. Fantastic. I am Weasel. I've never heard of that one. Infinity Train. I've never heard of that one. Johnny Bravo. Ah oh, man, it is. It is. It is a good one. His re his relentless pursuit of trying to get with women. Relatable. How he, would, how he would always fail. I want to say this is... Oh, wait, where is it?
Where is it? Oh, there it is. Um, uh, I want to say it's either just great, best, because I liked it occasionally. I never dedicated myself to watching it. Eh, fucking, I'll just put an S tier, fuck it. I mean, Count, Count Chicken was just weird to me. It seemed like a Ren and Stimpy kind of thing, and I, it also seemed just weird to me. I was a young boy, it's just, eh. Something you see more on, you, that probably belong on, like, Adult Swim. Johnny Test, at the time, I liked this show a lot. Oh, my eyes. Um, it's okay, minus one. What the fuck? Fucking fuck point system. It's, I, when, yeah, this John, John, Johnny Test liked it a lot when I saw it. Uh, nice, interesting concept about a uh, kid. Also, has a talking dog whose name was Dookie, I think I remember. Or. Yeah, it was Dookie, which <laughs> I just remember now means like crap. But I, I didn't know it at the time. And to get to do the things he wants, he gets experimented on by his twin scientist sisters. Cool adventures. But then, uh, also, I now remember that, that sh the show overused, like, the whipping sound effect too much. Like, if you look at videos on YouTube, there were compilations of every time there's, like, the whip sound effect. They used it every time. Like, I would estimate they used the whipping sound effect... 20 times an episode. They used it so much. I didn't really care myself, but in retrospect, I'm realizing they used it a lot. Baby Looney Tunes was top two. Either I just don't remember it, or it was just too babyish. Like, I definitely wasn't a baby watching Cartoon Network, so it just seemed like this, this is not my... I'm not the target audience here. But, oh, also, Bling Bling Boy, great character in the show. How do you, he would always try to get with Susan Test, I think. Not the other sister. Yeah. Great side character. Justice League. Wait, what's this one, then? There's two different Justice Leagues. I'm not sure which one's... This is the original. I don't know what this one is. Justice League. It was at least great. I'll give you that much. And this is a sequel, I'm guessing, so I didn't, I didn't watch that one. I named my dog after Johnny Test. <laughs> nice. Justice League Action, I've never seen that one. Oh, Crypto the Super Dog. I remember this one. For, for me, it just seemed like a strange thing. Like, why give Superman powers to, to a dog? But like, oh, he passed away. Oh, sorry to hear that, man. As long as you, have, yeah, as long as you have the good times with your dog, then that's all that matters. But then I realized, you know, why not? Why not give a dog, uh, super superhero Superman powers? Uh, I just say it was good. League of Super Evil. I want to say this sounds familiar. But I don't remember it at all. Juniper Lee? What even is that? Never heard of it. Long Live the Royals. Never heard of that one. Oh, the Looney Tunes show. This was great. I saw some recent compilations of this. Realizing how Daffy is just... Just sucks as a human being. And I, and I thought it'd be kind of weird trying to put the Looney Tunes characters in a real-life scenario. Like, you know, Bugs owns a house. He has a patent on an invention. They have jobs and stuff. It seems like something that wouldn't quite work, but it, they did it quite well. And then Bugs Bunny and Lola Bunny's relationship. Daffy being essentially like a bender. He's just a complete psychopath. So yeah, this, they actually did that well. It, it, it was a... Strange concept, but they, they did it well. Oh yeah, Mad TV. This was just... 
So weird. I remember when I first saw Mad TV, the one thing I remember is their Thundercats parody where they like they took Thundercats and put a bunch of like old memes into it. Like they put Lulled Cats, they put uh, Narwhals, they put I think Nine Cat as well. Yeah, but these parody and then there's that one there was that one mad short where a guy was popping like this massive pimple on his face and he was pointing away at it, but then as soon as he popped it, like ocean an ocean amounts of pus came out and he drowned in his own pimple pus. I mean, yeah, yeah, the jokes being either... At, at times, I couldn't tell if they were making a joke or just trying to make something strange and abstract. Because I can admit when I, uh, when I miss jokes, obviously, like in chat, all of you know when I miss jokes. But in terms of just producing some strange and sometimes interesting parodies, they did at least... At least pretty good. I'll give them good. Yeah, it was definitely some avant-garde abstract stuff but yeah obviously that's your that's your flavor i'll say at least good for in me for my eyes because back then when i was a when i was a youngin my humor was kind of straight i have no idea what the fuck this is i, I can't even see the name of it I think it's called Meow Meow. Oh, look at like a cat meow. Okay. Gang Gang 420 Hood. Ram, you are whiter than like sour cream on rice in a winter storm. You can't say that. It was like. <laughs> yeah, whatever. Flapjack. So good. So they, they 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 did the 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 was it abstract or like it was just shock I think like shock humor or like shock expression they did it good Ooh. um the the great balance between flapjack and knuckles there was Bubby the giant whale as well it was like. Who was obviously voiced by a black woman? You can tell just by in Bubby's voice, the you know, the giant whale. That was a black woman voicing her voicing that character. And then the show would often have like these super zoomed in realistic shots of stuff. And then oh, and then there, there's that great like iconic yell. What was it? It was like um, Flapjack yell. It's 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 essentially. Yeah, that one. That that was like a staple sound in the show. It was great. Yeah, it was kind of like Courage at times where they would, they would have their plot, they would do something, and then introduce these just, just terrifying moments of just nonsense. I mean, I just never took the time to watch it, though. Maybe I missed out on Don't Know. I would say you kind of missed out if you didn't watch Flapjack. You kind of you kind of missed out, especially on the whole like horror surreal kind of thing. You yeah you kind of did, but great if not top five then top at least top fifteen Cartoon Network shows. It was great. Oh yeah, I've um, I've only seen Megas uh, XLR. First time I ever seen anything from the show was from a tech talk. Yeah, apparently these guys like they find a giant robot in a in a dumpster heap, and apparently it belongs to like some. It belongs to like an agent of the government or like an alien or something. I yeah, I never heard of the show until that one TikTok clip, and it seemed like a cool show. Yes, yeah, some like giant robot truck thing, like a transformer. But yeah, I never watched it, but it seems like it seems like it would be good. The name was also kind of interesting. Yeah, just like with Flapjack. Mighty Magi Swords? I've never heard of that. Mike? Lu who? I've never heard of this one either. There's a lot of, a lot of random shows I've never heard of.
Our time. Day. Excuse me. Mixels, I've never heard of that. The Moxie Show, never heard of that. What's that? Oh, Mucha Lucha. I remember this one. This is the the wrestling the wrestling cartoon. Cause whenever I whenever I think of this show, I think of Natural Libre with Jack Black. Even though I've never seen that one too. Um I just don't remember enough to actually give it a fair rating. Oh, my Jim Punter's a monkey. This one was great. Yeah, it was just like they're really just like you know, kinda like wrestling, it's alright. Do this one. If this one felt like not a lot of people watched it. I feel like not, not a lot of people watched this one. This one was great. The theme song was also so good because it was just the same thing over again. My gym partner is a monkey, 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 monkey. My gym partner is a monkey, 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 monkey. It was it also a great concept too. A kid is placed in a school of animals be just because his last name is Lion. And things like Adam Lion. And so they think he's an animal, so they throw his ass into an animal school. It was great. And the dynamic between... The monkey, I forget his name, and then Adam, great show. There's another monkey, there's a giraffe. Um, some, and a bunch of other animals. I remember a few key episodes. There was like one where they invented like a helmet that would make him smarter. There's a spelling bee one. Uh, other stuff, but yeah, it was, it was just a great show. In, like kind of, it was kind of like a silly concept, like, oh, his last name is Lion, so he must be a lion. But... It, it, it was turned out to be not that, not that bad of a show, but one of my favorites, at least. Lego Ninjago. I've never seen a Lego show. Uh, it's, yeah, I've never seen a Lego show. I've seen Lego movies, but not Lego shows. Okay, KO. Nah. It just seems like one of these modern-day garbage that uh, this network seems to be pumping out. Eh. Over the Garden Wall, never heard of that. Oh, Ozzy and, uh... What's that? Drix? This one seems familiar, I think... You know the Lego Golden Mask movie? No. I've not heard of it. I've heard of this one. I think I confused this with Osmosis Jones. Like, maybe this is, like, in the same vein as Os Osmosis Jones. I think the I think the concept is that Ozzy and Drix are like things in a human body that like do stuff. I think the entire concept of the movie takes place in a human body or something. Um but I've never seen it. I've never seen this show. Oh the Powerpuff Girl. Wait, is this the original the Oh this is this is the remake. Yeah, the original Powerpuff Girls, great show. Great show. Um, wouldn't seem like it because given it's talking about girl stuff and obviously the audience of Cartoon Eric is is boys definitely a boy centered audience but they, they put it off they, they pulled it off well a show focused on girls um, I love Mojo Jojo one of the main villains the monkey with the brain helmet thing and then there was the mayor with like that giant red lady, or like the lady in the red dress. There's that one other villain who's like a robot lobster trans dude or something. I forget. And then there was like the boy version of the Powerpuff Girls. Another villain. Um. Yeah, I just yeah, it was just a nice show. They they did girl stuff well. The remake, I have not seen the remake. It's probably shit. Oh, the problem solvers. I remember this, man. The pr Dude, the problem solvers, it was it was acid trip, the show. I'm not sure if any of you... Yeah, the Powerpuff Girls theme song goes well. Do any of you remember the show Problem Solvers? It lasted for one season because it was 
so weird of a show, they want to they take it further. No, there are multiple episodes, but like only one season. Wait, let me... Uh, yeah, dude, it, it was it was it was not liked by like a lot of people. Yeah, it, it was only yeah multiple episodes, only one season. And it, do any of you remember this show? Because I love this show. Like it's, for some reason, it, it was it was acid trip. This show, it was a group of guys who solved problems. They're like detectives or whatever. It was a regular human dude, a robot, and just some giant like chocolate turd looking dude. It looked like something that actually should belong on Adult Swim. It was just, all right, the three dudes together, they have a case, try to figure it out, shit just goes crazy, and then somehow, like, fix the thing. Like, it, it's, it, was, it was just so weird, but I liked it for some reason. Yeah, it, it was essentially Acid Trip for Kids, the TV show. And the fact that it only lasted one season... Because these fucking troglodytes don't know what good TV is. They fucking suck. But underrated. Belongs in an actual underrated category. Only one season, 2 out of 10. Fuck off. I, I kind of recommend this to you, to any of you. If, if you want to watch it, I kind of recommend it. Dude, regular show. Fucking, I don't need to explain myself. I don't need to explain myself about a regular show. Fucking everyone knows why it's one of the greatest TV shows ever. I don't need to fucking explain myself. What if they revive it and bring it to an adult swim? I, I would watch it. If they, keep this, if they keep the same energy, the same acid aesthetic, I'd watch it. It would be awesome. It, it belongs on Adult Swim. That's probably why they didn't like it on Cartoon Network. Because around, around this time, I think... Problem Solvers was around just when Regular Show was like even a concept or about to be aired. So Cartoon Network was still willing to experiment. They, was, they, 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 they just took whatever idea that seemed interesting and then, and then just put it out there. But its aesthetic fits more with Adult Swim. It, it just looks like an Adult Swim show. They, they should have put it on there. Uh... Robot Boy, I barely remember this. F like, fragment, fragment of a fragment. Now, yeah, honestly, it's, it's... It's almost above, man. It's, it's almost above. But I'll put it on the top of the list, just so people know. Oh, Robotomy, I remember this one too. This was, again, th this was an Adult Swim show that was incorrectly placed on Cartoon Network. The premise of the show was that these two robot guys were attending school and every single episode, like 50 robots would just die and be destroyed for no reason. This was essentially, um, this is the robot version of Metalocalypse, that one adult swim show. Where it was like that, you know, all those dudes in the metal band. And then, you know, once in a while, something extreme in that show would happen, someone would die. This was the robot version of that show. Never belonged on Cartoon Network. It was at least good. It, it, that was seriously the whole premise of the show. Two dudes, high school, some activity, a bunch of robots would be destroyed and just die. It was, it, there was almost like no point to it, but it was just cheap fun. Samurai Jack, I don't need to explain myself. I don't need to explain myself. Oh yes, Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated. I wish I finished this series because it seemed like the story was going so fantastic. Uh, of, of like the, the mystery and like I think Coolsville that there are like in a different city you're almost cancelled yeah I'm not sure if they're in Coolsville or some other city or like Crystal Cove but the story was seemed like it was getting interesting where I left off from and um the relationship between each of the characters also developing like Shaggy and Velma and then Daphne and um Freddy it's actually a great show. I just, I wish I knew how it ended. I'll probably like watch it later. Not kidding. Oh yeah, I know. I know. Storm Hawks. Never heard of this. 
Oh yeah, this show too. Secret Mountain Fort Awesome. This show is in the... Bit my lip. This, this show I think is also in the same vein of Problem Solvers. Uh, this is an adult film show. It should have never been on Cartoon Network. It's, I almost don't remember it too because it was just so trippy and weird. Yeah, this one dude looks like he's just a giant butt. This one dude is like a purple demon monster and then this other short dude. Like a show I shouldn't have been watching as a kid. Yeah, exactly. Like, because of just how weird it is, it belongs on Adult Swim. But I don't know what Cartoon Network was thinking at the time, allowing shows like Problem Solvers and Fort Awesome on the Cartoon Network block. It didn't. It didn't make sense. But I don't remember too much of watching this show. Unfortunately, I don't remember. But it was a weird show, in the same vein of like Problem Solvers. Seek the Secret Saturdays. This one I've I've seen like promos. I think of it. I've seen promotional material of this show. Never seen it though. Looks kind of cool though. Sheep in the Big City. That is Skunk Fu. Vaguely remember this one. I think it's a skunk that knows kung fu. Fuck it, it's like, okay, why not? But never seen it. Sonic Boom. I was initially turned off from this show because it didn't seem like something that would, that would go well. Like, like the, the only good Sonic show I remember is Sonic X on Jet X and Four Kids. But like, it was all the Sonic characters and then that one little kid that had them like front of the, Chris, the Chaos, uh, Chaos Emeralds. This show upon rewatch, yeah, Jet X, yeah. This show upon rewatch is actually pretty good. Yeah, I, yeah, I know Jet X, Jet X and Four Kids, part of the Saturday, Saturday, Saturday morning, I think even Friday block, morning block, it would show Sonic X on there. So yeah, Sonic Boom upon rewatch, yeah, it was it was good shit. It was good. Pretty good. They like they have their moments. Uh, they have their. Um, I think it's. I think they use like meta, either meta humor or like. Uh, some kind of thing, but the humor that they use in in certain parts of the show is really good. Like they make callbacks to the Sonic video game franchise. This show even insults Sonic fans. The notion of like, Sonic fans writing you know fan fictions that are super perverted. They make fun of that. They make fun of old Sonic games. They make fun of like each other's character designs. So either a guy like super meta or like just it, can, it just it just it's it's kind of good. I'll put at least good. Yeah. Also, yeah, I've seen like compilations of this show of like of of Knuckles being a great character, Doctor Eggman, and Sonic. I don't know what it is about it, but like, yeah, this show actually like has it has its moments. Oh, Space Ghost Coast to Coast. Oop. Okay. Um. This. Um. This was like. I think Adult Swim, but like, they took an Adult Swim character and made him do like a car generic friendly show by like doing interviews or whatever I've never seen Space Ghost and I think I've never seen this show either I've just, I've just seen clips of it so I, I think this was like one of the original shows that was made when Adult Swim was actually like being created this is like the pilot uh, series oh yes I do remember School Boy the, the one thing I remember from the show was when the boy in the show, there's one scene in which they like switch roles. The squirrel was, was supposed to act like the boy, and the boy was going to act like the squirrel. And there's one scene in which some people approach his house, are about to knock on his door, but then he busts through the door and starts dragging his butt along the, like, the lawn. I don't know why that's the one thing I remember from that show, but that's the one thing I remember. 
So I don't remember too much of the show, unfortunately. Star Wars Clone War. <sighs> Clone Wars. I've never seen this one. This one I have seen with Ahsoka or whatever. Ahsoka or whatever. This one I have seen, it's... I was never excited when this one came on. It was just like, I would wait for just like the good moments of this show. That will say... Actually, this would, this would be more fair since... Yeah. Oh yeah, Static Shock. I don't remember... Yeah, it's like in its moments. Yeah, I had some good ones. I don't remember too much of the show. It was just like a black kid who had lightning powers. The only thing, I want, the only thing, one thing I do remember is that one episode in which the dude's friend's dad was like a mega racist. That's all I remember from it. So I don't remember it, but I, the theme song was good. It was probably a good show. Steven Universe did not watch that. It seemed like a piece of crap on day one. Like, it just, it just, it didn't seem like it was going anywhere. Like, all these crystal moon women taking this young boy who dresses like a lesbian on, like, space adventures and whatnot. But then, like, the adventures weren't even fun. This was the beginning of Cartoon Network's downfall. I, d I did not like it. I did not like it. No, I'm not stopping the list. Suck me. Camp Lasso. It's it's S tier, obviously, right here. Obviously, it's S tier. The fuck. Yeah, but it's, um, I don't know this. No, actually, bad. Did not like it. You lucky bitch. <laughs> Summer Camp Island? Never heard of that. Sunday Panis? I've never heard of this one. Sunday Panis. The fuck? SWAT Cats? I've never... I mean, again, I've been out of the TV game for like 10 plus years. There could be shows I've just never heard of. I can admit that. Sunday Panis, SWAT Cats, and Summer Camp Island. Never heard of any of these. Oh yeah, Symbiotic Titans. I do remember this. I remember this. Like, it, it's right here. I do, this, this one was at least great. This is a great one. Um, Princess and her bodyguard from another planet have to leave. because It's being taken over. Their planet gets conquered and they arrive on Earth. And they can form like their own like hologram robot things. But then they can come together to form the symbiotic titan with like their robot friend, butler person. I don't know who like this dude was, but it was like his like their like robot companion or whatever. And they tend to high school trying to fight off any um Forces from that invasion that try to come to Earth and try to like take them hostage, or whatever. Um, so overall, not not too bad of a show. Our style is a bit more, I would say, more anime-ish, but it's it was still kind of good. Teen Titans Go, Christ! If there's one thing that this show did good, is remind us how good the original Teen Titan was. Because Jesus Christ. This was probably also the downfall of Cartoon Network. I think this one came before Steven's Universe. This was the trigger. This was... This was just bad. It's a terrible show. The original Teen Titans, baby. There we go. Put that shit up there. Do I need to explain myself? I don't need to explain myself. I don't need to explain it myself. Thundercats, I've never even seen the original Thundercats, but um, it's definitely, it's definitely more of an older show. People like Face Stuff or P 
I don't probably know this one. But I, I'm at least familiar with the property. Dude, of course I know Two Times is, is a good fucking show. God damn it. Tig and Seek? Never heard of her that. Home Squad? Never heard of that. Oh yeah, Total Drama Island. Uh, there's like, there's the original series and like two spinoffs. Tig sounds offensive, it kind of does. Total Drama Island, the original series. I was kind of interested into this show, just like to see who would win. The art style, eh. It was at least good. I'll give him that much. It was at least good. Ridiculous race, never heard of it. Oh yeah, they made a to they made a Total Drama Island baby version. I have thankfully never seen that monstrosity. Oh yeah, Totally Spies. I remember this one too. Teenage girl, super spies, going on missions and stuff. They had like a butler. It was kind of like Charlie's Angels, but the dude was older and the women were younger. I remember the show. It was it was almost a great show. Actually, no, it was a great show. Fuck it. Yeah, the blonde can get it. Yeah. Back when I was like a teenager, of course. Nowadays, I can't. I'm not going to say that. Transformers. I've never watched this, the Transformers like cartoons. But actually, I know what that is. I've just never seen it. Uncle Grandpa. Never seen that. It just seemed... Too weird. Don't know what's going on with it. Unikitty. Oh yeah. Also some like new age garbage cartoon is pumping out. Looks looks like shit. Victor and Valentino. Never heard of that. Villainous. I've never heard of that. Bear Bears is new age cartoon bullshit. What a cartoon. Never heard of that. Robot Jones. I have never heard of that one. What's new Scooby Doo? Oh, dude. Shaolin Showdown. Fuck, that's so good. Um, what's new Scooby Doo? This series of Scooby Doo is not. Again, the original, in my eyes, will never be beaten. The OG Scooby-Doo series, season one, specifically season one, will never be beaten. But the new Scooby-Doo series... It's alright. It's almost great. I would put it high good. I would at least give it a high good. I think maybe it's, it, maybe it's the art style. It's not, as, it's not as terrifying as it used to be. It's almost too clean of a presentation. Oh, but dude, Shaolin Shodan. I remember this. Thankfully, I still do. Also, this show, it just popped into, into my head randomly one day, too. Yes, season one original series, Scooby-Doo, it just can't be beaten in my eyes. Yeah, I remember this show existed randomly, like, months ago, for some reason. With, um... I think I think because it was, it was of this kid, the short yellow dude with like the dots on his head, like Krillin. But yeah, it was like yeah, there's there's this cowboy, this one girl, this short yellow dude, and like just some regular guy. Jackie Chan show was that Cartoon Network? I don't think that was Cartoon Network. Wait, was it? I think that may have been Disney Channel or something else. That wasn't Cartoon Network. Yeah, but sh yeah, challenge. And then there was that one dude, the villain, who's like, had like these word goggles or something. And all these, then all these like practice the art of Shaolin fighting. I, I think I want to rewatch this show because I remember it being so good. One of the best and kind of, I would say, underrated. Shaolin Showdown. I gotta rewatch that. WB? 
I don't think... Wait, was WB a network, or...? Oh, no, I'm, I'm thinking of the, of the CW. Never mind. I'm thinking of the CW network. Young Justice, that was actually good. It's, it, it's, it's always hard, again, they, they take a property and then young it. They, they youngify it. Just like they did with Looney Tunes, they made baby Looney Tunes. Teen Titans Go was almost a youngification of it. But Young Justice, they did kind of well. How the, how the youngins would take up the mantle of the, the present day superheroes and how they would grow their powers. Young Justice did it well. Annoying Orange, fucking Christ. Hero 108. I don't know what that is, actually. Thundercats War, never seen it. Oh, Batman, the, the original animated one? Ah, oh, man, I kind of like... I kind of like Brave and the Bold better than the, than the animated series because the art style w was better. Your fate will be decided, I know. You made that clear in the very beginning. I like, I like Brave and the Bold better because of the art style. But the stories in the animated series... I think, I think the animated series had that one episode in which the Joker was terrorizing this one guy. This one just like... like just dude who had like a really bad life. And he was pushed to the edge so much by the Joker that he actually was planning on murder suiciding with the Joker. He was gonna like corner the Joker with a bomb and then kill him with the bomb and, and himself to forever ruin the re reputation of the Joker. I think that episode was in this series. That was a great episode. But it was at least I'll say S here, but I like this one better because of the art style. Superman. I don't think I've seen this one. I, do, I don't remember this one. Elliot from Earth. This was like a Steven Universe piece of shit. Never seen it. Actually, I would discriminate against it already. It's bad. The Baby Bears. There was already the Bear Bears. Now they're making the Baby Bears. They keep with this, this, this youngification of media. Bear Bears was already a kid's show. Or almost a baby show. Now they're making a show for like zygotes and embryos. I can already tell it's bad. Jellystone? I did not know they made a Yogi Bear cartoon. Never watched it. The Fungies? Never heard of that. Steven Universe Future, he's all grown up and looks just as stupid. I'm really going to hate against you. Alright, there you go. The Cartoon Network tier list. It, this is quite literally in, you cannot disagree with this list. If you are, you are a genuine retard. You just, you just cannot. Let me see if I can put anything. Um... No, I just haven't seen these shows enough to like to judge them. These Benton ripoffs. I haven't seen these shows. No. Yeah, I just haven't seen these, and I don't remember these well well enough. Yeah, this is the list. Foster's S tier, dumb fuck, obviously. Where is it? Right here. Are you blind? If anything, you should know it's already S tier and look, look for it in the S tier area. Obviously, it's one of the best. I'm not lucky, I just know good media. You're lucky that you're someone who also has the same opinion and I don't roast you for your dumbass opinion. You should be lucky. Count your lucky stars there, buddy. I'm gonna save this image.